Hey, 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 guys. Welcome back to another episode of Film Learning Live. Now, this is one I've been planning for a little while. Just had to uh, get in the right mind space and just have Dex to be asleep. So, big highs to everyone. I'm just going to run down a list. Uh, hi to Mr. Flashman, Venti Memes, Hejar AE, Nekox, LBDB, Indifferent, Padfoot, Grendal, Flav... <laughs> Okay, there's quite a few of them. So, hi to everybody that's come on board. Now, today we're going to be uh, checking out how to customize the uh, Avengers Endgame uh, template in Cinema 4D. So, this is a little bit complicated, and it works with uh, the standalone version of Cinema 4D. But, let's just uh, jump into Cinema 4D, and we'll have a bit of a look. Now, before we do, why don't we just have a quick sort of, uh, I don't know, impromptu Q&A session. So if anyone's got any questions about anything, we'll just fire away. We'll do that for about five minutes, and then we'll hop into the actual tutorial itself. So if anyone's got any questions, fire them away right now. <laughs> okay, we've got a whole bunch of people saying, my God, and yay, and what up, and all that. Now, uh, Aria Gilly says, what camera do you use? I currently shoot with a Panasonic GH4, which is currently plugged into the computer. So that's what I'm working with at the moment. I've actually got a camera adapter coming for this, so I can actually use uh, my old 5D filters. So I've got a whole bunch of lenses for my Canon 5D Mark II, which is what I used to uh, shoot the first season of Film Learning on, but it only shoots in... Uh, full HD, and the image quality is nothing compared to the GH4, which shoots in 4K. So anytime you can get a 4K camera over a uh, full HD camera, go for it. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Shadow Muir says, what's the difference between Cinema 4D and After Effects? Well, After Effects is primarily a compositing software used for motion graphics and... oh compositing and <laughs> Cinema 4D is a 3D program so it's 3D modeling, 3D sculpture, all that sort of stuff, animation, all of that in 3D. So they're completely different programs really. Now uh, Flash Rules has just asked, hey Grant is there any more tutorials you do for removing people from shots and putting yourself in like what I did for Deadpool and Endgame? I actually have one of those uh, coming up. I've been working on it. So we will be doing something with that. I've got to um, uh, get that all coordinated with uh, Boris FX. I want them to guest tutor do, a, bleh, do a guest tutorial for actually removing someone from a shot. Now they do currently have one up on their channel and what I might do is I'll link to that when I, this uh, goes uh, live on the channel. Sorry guys. But yeah, they currently have one. Man, that is shiny today <laughs> sorry uh, yeah Boris effects currently have a how to remove someone from a shot on their channel so you can just check out the Boris effects channel but I will link that when this goes into archive as well uh, let's see alternative cheap editing softwares besides after effects well we've got a video up on the channel at the moment that's uh, for Wondershare Filmora that's sort of a basic level editor that I uh, Pretty sure it's either free or very, very cheap. Yes, thank you. Mason said Cinema 4D is dedicated 3D software and AE is dedicated compositing software. A much more succinct answer than one I gave. Now, Piano Composer says, I saw you vote for Adrian on Production Crate. Nice cameo. Oh, thank you very much. It was a, actually a nice opportunity to uh, work with the Production Crate guys. Hopefully, we'll be doing something a bit more detailed in the future rather than me just sort of guesting and them guesting. But we'll just see how it goes because, yeah, once again, it's one of those things. They live in America. I live in Australia. And my time is... And they have a crew, which is... Oh, that's the dream. I wish I had a crew. <laughs> I'm always so envious of the guys in Production Crate and Cinecom because they have more than one person. Yeah, I'll just have a quick look. Someone just said... Um, uh, how long does it take to learn these skills? It takes a long time. A lot of a lot of back and forth, a lot of expect, experimentation, a lot of study to learn how to do all this stuff. But 
once you've got the basic idea, you can tend to open up After Effects or Cinema 4D and just go, okay, I know how to do this. So once you get in that mindset and you can actually just open up the program and know how to do something or have a good idea of at least a starting point on how to create something, then you're in the right mind space. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just ducking between the two. I've got the chat window over here. Uh, let's see. Afiki, Afiki said, did you use Photoshop removing someone from footage? I have done that before. I didn't, I didn't do it with the, uh, the removal of Captain America from that shot. I actually used Mocha and its remove module and After Effects and I composited uh, a clean plate. It was actually a really complicated way of removing it because I even had to put in a separate light and set up a parallax between that light and the background here. That's why I'm not doing that tutorial on removing uh, Captain America from that shot because it was absurdly complicated to remove him and still... Uh, have the shot moving because the shot moves it's focal range changes sorry focal range changes and that you've got scaling you've got parallax you've got actual camera movement all of that combined is just a nightmare for removing anyone from a shot and i'm so glad it turned out as well as it did because it took me probably two and a half weeks of working every day on that to get it to where it, it looked seamless. Now, sorry guys, I, I'm just sort of popping between the two here. Now the animator said, yo Grant, did I miss the tutorial? Not yet, no, not yet at all. We're just about to get into it. So uh, Ari Gilly says more Titan effects, maybe. I'll just see how we go. Now Padfoot's just asked a very good question that uh, what effect do you think you will never do because it's too hard to accomplish. I'll probably not do a tutorial on creating a realistic human like that. Like I said, the, the Hulk effect please thing, because you're transitioning from an actual human to a CGI stunt double. They've got to grow all their muscles out and there's, there's just so much complex work involved in just simply animating, compositing that together. I couldn't even imagine teaching that. It would be like a 10 part series and it would go for like 20 hours. So it's that's not something that I could viably teach to you guys. Cause it would just, it would be, it would take months and months just to put that one set of tutorials together. In the meantime, I've still got to continue to pump out the weekly ones at the same time. And just that just, like my brain is just melted out of my ear and on the floor thinking about that. So, yeah, it's very, very complicated. Now, Everything Arrowverse says, do you have any tips for a cinematic look for a fan film? Well, it depends on what you mean by the cinematic look because there's a whole bunch of plugins out there that something like uh, Magic Bullet Film or Film Convert or, film Con or its offshoot Film Convert Pro that will give you a stylized film look. But realistically, it's up to you to light your uh, scene correctly. Because lighting is... Oh, there's two different things, really. Lighting is key to getting a good cinematic look. Just setting up your lights and uh, compositing, composing your shot in a way that it actually looks cinematic. And then the second thing is actually having a camera like, say, a DSLR that gives you depth of field. Because depth of field is yet another thing that gives you a cinematic look. So we've got a camera here. This is just a 5D Mark II. And it has an f-stop of 4.0 on this particular lens. Now that's not a ridiculously shallow depth of field. But it's enough to give you that cinematic look. <laughs> quote unquote. Now we do have uh, ones with a, a shorter focal length. So you've got one like this. This one here has a 2.8, so that's a pretty shallow depth of field as well. But I've got like 50 millimeter lenses with an f1.4, and that's just, you've got about that much. So think about a couple of centimeters or maybe even an inch of where your subject's actually in focus. So you might, if you focus on their nose, their eyes will be out of focus. So being able to, 
tick off those three things. So having having uh, depth of field, composing a shot that actually looks cinematic, and bringing in some uh, decent color correction and lighting to that scene as well. So add those those sort of three fundamentals together, and then you'll achieve a cinematic look. So I hope that wasn't too rambling. I can't imagine what Grant's desk looks like if he can reach out and grab 20 cameras and lenses within arm's reach. Yep, there's another lens. There's a light. <laughs> there's a Super Nintendo Mini. It's all right, that's just out of focus there. Oh, there is. Yeah, there's a lot of crap, but I also have storage under here. So... <laughs> But yes, uh, I don't want to t tilt the camera down because it is a shambles. I have, I have shame. So much shame. Now, there is two doggies in the background. Right? He's not dead. He's just sleeping. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I just, <laughs> I just hit the lowering thing on my chair with my ankle. <laughs> there we go. I'm back. Yeah. Oh. Good God. Now, guys, um, what is the cheapest DSLR you would recommend? Ooh. I don't know if I'd recommend the cheapest DSLR. Um, I'd probably say, like, the, the Panasonic Lumix ones, you, you're probably okay with those. Uh, the Sony A7 is pretty good. But, yeah. I've... I bought the GH4 because at the time it was the the best entry level 4K camera on the market, and same with the 5D. People were pulling their pants down over this thing, and so I bought it. So I I couldn't really give you a recommendation what the cheapest camera is because I'd probably recommend not buying the cheapest uh, DSLR camera you can get. I'd say save your money and buy that one that's got good reviews is in a relatively decent price range. And, well, that's really it. Just, uh, you can go on YouTube and just write best DSLR camera for shooting 4K video, something like that, and then just go for it. Yeah. Guys, I think what I might do is we've addressed a few questions and we're at the 13 minute mark, which is way longer than I wanted to go. So I think what we might do is just jump into Cinema 4D and let's, uh, I'll just show you a little bit about how I built this, uh, uh, the Avengers Endgame logo. So if I click that, now we're in Cinema 4D. So guys, you can see a few things here right now. Uh, the title is completely not broken up, and that's because I've actually turned off all the uh, the fr fracture components. So I'm just going to jump in there, and I'll just turn them back on. So there's an outer ring, there's an in there's an inner ring, and then there's just a whole bunch. Of, like these are basically low poly primitives. But look what happens when I turn on the fracture objects. So there's one; it's blown apart completely. Then the outer loop fracture that and then we'll put the loop parts fracture on as well see already that's a dynamically different scene and all I did was just click one switch now that's the great thing about this Veroni uh, fracture object is that it non-destructively breaks apart your objects and you can get some insanely detailed results now just be aware this is only with the full version of Cinema 4D. Now, also, you can see with the A here that it's got, uh, you probably call that a cap around it or just like an outline, and that's its own thing. So if we turn on the fracture on that, we've got that now. And then if we turn on the fracture on the logo, bam. Okay, so that's our completed logo right there. And you just saw for yourself that how absurdly simple this thing is before you put on any of the fracture. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just gonna grab a drink. <coughs> Sorry, I've had this nagging cough for a couple of weeks now. Hmm. 
So what I might do is I'll just show you, what I'm gonna do today is to show you how to customize this A because it's actually pretty damn easy. And I'm not gonna to touch any shortcuts because every time I try to touch a shortcut in one of these live shows, something bloody happens. <laughs> always cuts to a different camera angle or it actually cuts to um, no audio. So at the moment, just let me know guys if anything goes wrong because this is this is actually going well so far. So if we turn off the fracture on the logo and we turn off the fracture on the outer, and you can see that the only thing that's driving this, oh, sorry, didn't turn that off properly. You can see the only thing that's driving all this fracture stuff is oh, it's a simple bit of geometry really. It's just a 3D A. There's nothing special about it whatsoever. It's an extremely low polygon A. And the thing is it's not it's not a spline it's not um, mo text or anything like that. All it is is just I typed the A out in mo text, and then I just connected it all together, and now it's just one single polygon object. And it's the same with and this here. All this is is just an A spline, and if we turn off the sweep nerves, that's all it is. It's just an A spline with a rectangle inside of sweep nerves that turns it into this sort of cap object. Uh, Mason, no, I haven't released this Cinema 4D file. I will be releasing it at the end of this stream so people can have a bit of a play with it. Okay, so what I might do is just jump back. So there we go. So what I think we'll do... Yeah, did I move that? I think I might have moved that. Sorry guys, just bear with me. I just want to make sure I didn't stuff anything up. <laughs> what is it? No, no, I didn't. I didn't move it. That's where it's supposed to be. Or is it? I'm just going to turn that frat. Sorry guys. <laughs> this is not the succinct tutorial that I was looking for, but this is what happens when I go live. So we're just going to move that back a little bit. And then we'll just check the original camera angle. Much a better. <laughs> so basically to customize this, all we have to do is replace both this spline and this A object. Now to do that, we need to make a new one. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm rather than do mo text, I th because it gets a little bit complicated, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a spline a text spline, thank you. Now, and we'll type out, I don't know, let's do an F. So there's our F spline. And we're just gonna run through the fonts and actually find the Avengers logo text, whatever it's called. Sorry guys, I got a lot of fonts. Okay, so here it is, Heroic Avenger. So we're gonna pop that down and let's just scale this bad boy up. So I want it to take up about the exact same space as our A, which means we probably need to put this up to about 400. Now at the same time, guys, we wanna make sure you can actually still see that it is an F. So we might have to lower that down a little bit. I didn't even touch anything. I didn't touch anything. <sighs> I did not touch a single, oh, cause I hit, I hit a key, didn't I? <laughs> God, I just hit an F key. I've really got to, oh, God's sake. Okay. Sorry guys, I will apologize for that. And 
let's get back into Cinema 4D and keep going. So, sorry about that, guys. I, was I was I muted for long? I hope not. <laughs> okay, so, so I've got my text. I've, I've got my text line out. I've typed my F. And then what I'm going to do is just grab an extrude. And I'm going to drop that into the extrude. About 10 seconds. Cool, cool, cool. That's good. Okay, so we've now got our 3D letter. Now, what I want to do with this is I then want to make that. Oh, firstly, I'm just going to grab that text spline. We'll just name that F. And then we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it out. Then what I want to do is I'm going to delete the spline from our sweep nerves here. And I'm going to grab this F. We should be able to drop that in and have that actually work. So just bear with me a second. <laughs> okay, that was supposed to work, but it didn't. Huh. Oh, I know why. I know why. Ooh. Just got to switch these around. Okay. So that's... There we are. There we are. Okay, so I just had the hierarchy wrong. So I'll just go through what I did just then. Okay? So we'll just undo all that. Okay, so I copied the spline. Now we've just got to make this editable. So it's actually a spline. Then we want to grab that. We just want to drop it into this sweep nerves. And then make it the bottom. Okay, so now if I turn off our extrude there, you can see we've now got the outline of the F. So that's one part of this that's already done. Okay. Now with our extrude here, just bear with me, I'm just going to turn those off. And we need to make this editable. So we want this whole thing as just one polygon okay so we're going to hit the make editable here so that'll turn it into an extrude but you can see we have caps so we don't want that what we want to do is grab all of these and then we want to right click we want to hit connect objects plus delete so now that f and we'll remove this stuff here that f is just one object so now we can grab that and we can drop it in here and then we're going to grab the texture from the A, delete the A, now we've got an F we've got an a, and we've got the outline of the F, now if we cross our fingers and get down on our knees and pray, we should be able to turn on this fracture and it'll work. So let's try the outer first. Okay, that worked. Awesome, awesome. Now let's turn on this. All right, everyone cross their fingers and their knees. Boom. So there we go. <laughs> we have actually changed that from an A to an F. In real time, rambling all the way. We did have a little bit of an error there, but I figured that out as well. So if we were to say rewind this back and push play, it's going to take forever. <laughs> but if I say, let's just, for an example, we turn off these, these fractures. We should be able to get this to play. We need to turn off, I think we'd have to turn off all the fractures. Okay, let's try it now. Okay, so there we go. So camera still animates, still get the reveal of the big old F. And if we turn on our fractures,
and let's just try and hit the render button and see how it goes. This does render relatively quickly for me. So you can see it's pretty impressive how easy that was to customize to a different letter. I mean, really, all we did was just type out a new letter and just make that editable, make the spline editable, drop that in the sweep nerves, drop that, well, pretty much low poly version of that F into our fracture, turn it back on, and then it works. So we're almost done with the render. And you can see, look, we've got we've got good self-shadowing. We've actually got some good detail all around these parts. We've got a volumetric light beyond that. I think it's a spotlight. Yep. And we've got a, just a few random lights placed around the scenes that will just catch the edges of these and, and display some... Uh, some shadows. Now guys, if you're wondering about the uh, the CPU specs, which I can see a few people are, if you head onto the uh, YouTube channel, do a search on new PC, all the specs are there and I think I even open up the PC and go through everything. So there we go, there's the finished render. So let's just have a look at the time there. So we're at 27 minutes and I started that at 30 minutes. Did I actually put the uh, it in there the whole time? I'm not sure. But yeah, you can see how easy that was to actually do. In fact, I should probably just do an episode of Film Learning or even just cut this one down and show you how easy it is to do. Oh, by all means, uh, Everything Arrowverse says, do you mind if I link the video in the chat? Chuck that down below. I will approve it in the moment it comes up. So thank you very much for that, dude. That is so very much appreciated. Now, uh, Shadow Mule Hero. Here we go. Sorry, I'm just going to uh, head over the, there and approve that. So guys, everything Arrowverse has just posted the uh, my new PC specs there. So that'll be able to tell you everything that you need. Now, I will say that this renders Cinema 4D pretty well, but I almost feel like it renders my uh, Premiere profiles. Like when I actually render out Film Learning to export it to YouTube, it renders it slower, which to me, it it boggles the mic because it makes no sense. This is an infinitely faster PC than my last one, which is around here somewhere. I think it might actually just be up in the back corner, but it almost slows my computer down to a crawl when I'm rendering Premiere Pro, which, yeah, I don't know. It makes no sense. So, <laughs> there you have it, fellas. And if there's any ladies. <laughs> but according to my analytics, uh, my audience is 92.9% .9 male. So we have made some headway. We were at 99 at some point. So, yeah, guys... That is how you uh, customize that. Now, I'm not sure if I actually put this one in uh, the download pack, but if I haven't, I will totally do that. I will put together a separate download pack and upload this one. Now, is uh, uh, let's see. Let's add some more questions. Okay, let's go back to our, just our regular window. Sorry, guys, there is no uh, audio on the chat window at the moment. So, <coughs> excuse me. So let's answer some more questions. Why not? Uh, let's see. Have you ever tried Element 3D or 3D stuff in After Effects? I have. Our very first uh, Flash title template was 100% in After Effects. So that was a 3D text in After Effects. And it looks really bad. Oh, it just looks, it makes me cringe when I see it. Yeah, Shane has asked if I wanted to do an all Cinema 4D tutorial for something. Totally. I mean, we kind of just did that right then. 
I'm not too keen on doing something like building something in Cinema 4 the like something that complex from scratch because it just takes so long to figure out how to do these things. I mean, I was experimenting with the fracture objects for a long time until I found something I really liked and being able to just figure out how to drag and drop it and make it just work it just it takes a lot of experimentation so i don't know how keen i would be to i don't know do something like uh, let's just say build something from scratch in cinema 4d i love doing tutorials in cinema 4d but i don't know how keen i am to yeah do one from like build something from scratch but i'm glad to say that we've finally just done our first exclusive cinema 4d tutorial and it's only taken <laughs> five years Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mason's asked a pretty interesting question. Uh, how good are you at shading and creating materials for your Cinema 4D three or for your 3D elements? I am terrible at it. That's one of the things that I am absolutely awful at. I wish I was better. I see people like Mason Waters and Niha and Crimson Wrens and uh, oh, well. <sighs> That's just to name a few. I've seen their, their material work, and it is so much better than what I can do. I am very, very bad at it. I wish I could get better, but I just I don't have the time to teach myself how to do that stuff. Like Using stuff like Substance Painter and ZBrush, I'd love to learn how to do them. It's just, yeah. Just, it's, it's my number one excuse, and that was, it's just time. Like, I've literally put Dexter down for a nap and I came out here, made the thumbnail for the video. Then I had to go back in there because he wanted one of his night lights off and one of the night lights on. And then he'd finally go to sleep and he was just finally just drifting off. I confirmed he was asleep and then I, then I started the stream. <laughs> so, now everything Arrowverse is sorry. He's just said, oh, sorry, someone just said, I loved your appearance in production crate. I very much enjoyed that i hope to do something more with them in the future uh, <coughs> it's damn throat uh everything arrow versus said this is a small request but if you have time can you make a tutorial for a custom logo reveal with a light reflection similar to the one in your homecoming template but with any png file we might be able to do something like that because I want to take on the Harry Potter logo. You guys, if you've seen the community tab, you've seen that I created a 3D Harry Potter logo with a bevel. Now, I did that uh, jumping off from Film Rights tutorial. You know how they did a... I don't know if you guys saw it, but they did a Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them uh, 3D text. And they actually extruded the text from a PNG file that was alpha channeled in Photoshop... And then they brought that into Blender. And what I did was I skipped the Blender step and I took it into Cinema 4D to see if it would work as well. And lo and behold, it does. Because essentially what you're doing in Photoshop is you're taking that alpha channel PNG file and you're extruding you're extruding 3D data from that. And I don't I honestly don't understand why you can't do this in Cinema 4D. Creating a bevel in Cinema 4D is a nightmare. It really is like creating. Sorry, I just got distracted there. I was just checking, <laughs> checking the yeah. Creating a a chiseled bevel effect in Cinema 4D is something that you have to do individually, letter by letter, and actually working with the geometry. Like you've got to cut into it and bring it out. There was a plugin, or it wasn't so much a plugin as it was. A, and it was from uh, Einstein Effects, who he makes some great Cinema 4D tutorials, but he had something called Bevel Effects. And he had a bunch of presets that had bevels on them. And that was great, but it wasn't something you just drag and drop on any font or else it would sort of freak out. And if anyone's seen, uh, done anything in Cinema 4D where you've done something with text and then you've you've put like a fillet cap on it and you've just started to adjust it and then you get this weird jank that comes out of it and you can't fix that. Yeah, well, that's what was happening with the bevel effects. So being able to 
just easily do that in Photoshop, it's just, it was an enormous weight off my shoulders because it's like, finally, I can do a freaking Harry Potter title effect. So I will be doing that soon. My next episode of Film Learning will be an insert yourself from uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. So I'm at, at the moment, I'm removing a couple of people from scenes in the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer and hopefully we'll be shooting some stuff on a green screen over the course of the next few days and that'll be up shortly. So that'll be our next episode. From there, I'm oh, I'm working on a few different episodes so I can't tell you what the next episode is after that but we should have some fun with the Spider-Man Far From Home uh, insert yourself because, yeah... It's harder than I wanted it to be, these ones, because they are somewhat static shots. It's just, yeah. Sorry, Mason Reynolds brought up a good point there. He said, my issue with most 3Ds, 3D effects is that I use, it's hard for me to composite them realistically. It's the color correction I'm not sure of. And this is coming from an earth bending effect I'm doing. Well... The biggest thing with uh, compositing 3D effects realistically is making sure the lighting's matched. And I would highly recommend getting something like Red Giant's Colorista because that helps me with compositing more than anything. It's just there's so many fine-tuned controls that it's hard not to be able to match it. Now, there are times where I haven't been able to uh, match a 3D composite to a... Uh, well, sorry, a 3D model to a scene. I mean, if anyone's seen my short that was the Black Friday uh, Action Jackson one, it. I mean, I was on a time constraint, but I do cut to a CG version of Action who jumps through the roof, and I was absolutely appalled at the, the compositing job that I did on that. It's just, I was absolutely under the pump. So, I don't know if I actually answered that question or not. But yeah, trying to match something to a scene with uh, color correction is hard. If you can match the lighting first, and the, my best recommendation for that is import your live action footage as a background into your shot. That will, that will inform the way you light the scene, and it'll also inform the color of your texture. But it's always, it's always important that when you're doing any sort of compositing, that you match the coloring of that scene before you do any other color correction. So I shoot in a flat color profile. So when I bring in a 3D model from uh, Cinema 4D or a render from After Effects, I immediately mute that color in that 3D model to match my scene before I do any other color correction or color grading. So that's probably the best tip I could give you for uh, realistic compositing. It's just... First off, match your, match your camera's coloring. So if you've got any sort of color that's similar to the model you're compositing in, do your best to match that color 100% and then add an adjustment layer on top of that and then start your color grade from there. Uh, let's see, Nora's reverse time effect. Oh, from the last episode, or was it the, it would have been the episode before, because I haven't seen The Flash for a couple of weeks now, because I've been binging Netflix shows. Um, now, I will answer this about Element 3D. Guys, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Element 3D, just as a compositing tool, because... I seem, tend to notice that whenever uh, Andrew Kramer uses Element 3D in his scenes, the models that he's importing are ridiculously um, uh, complex and they're very well... Um, uh, the materials and shaders on them are extremely well set up. So it's pretty much just a drag and drop and a couple of lights. I'm not a huge fan of the 3D lights in After Effects. So I tend to not want to use Element because I have not really found a single opportunity where I've put a 3D model from Element into a scene and I'd be able to composite it realistically because, yeah, 
I just don't like the way 3D lights behave in After Effects. And when you have the full version or even Cinema 4D light, it's so much easier to rig lights in a full 3D environment uh, in Cinema 4D than it is to do it in After Effects. Yeah. We've got a couple of requests here, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come up here because I did miss a few. So Mother Effin Phase Covboard said, "Can you do Cisco's vibe vision effect?" We have actually done that. It'll either be in the season, I think it's in the season five playlist. It's either season four or season five. Just go on the channel and type vibe. We do have a few vibe effects, actually. Now, can you do Cicada's dagger sucking someone else's power out? Possibly do that. I don't think that'd be actually that hard to do. I think you might even be able to do that with like a a dust puff. So say you get like a, um, even just a bit of powder and go like that. Like say shoot that on a black screen or a blue screen and then reverse it so that it looks like it's coming back in. So you'd get a, you'd have a tiny little blowout like that, so right, like that, and then if you reverse it, it'll look like it's coming back into one central location, and in that case, you could just composite the dagger, dagger in there. Mask around, say, if you had a hand, you would like that. So yeah, that might actually be doable. Just I I'm not sure because uh, like the MCU stuff on my channel is doing so much better than the Flash stuff, and I think that's mainly because the popularity I don't know whether the popularity of Flash is waning or not, or people just have Flash effects overload. I'm not sure. All I know is that the the Marvel stuff that I've done over the last uh, few weeks is doing so much better than our regular stuff. An Iron Man flying effect. Well, I, if I was able to source a decent uh, Infinity War Iron Man suit model, I would totally do some Iron Man stuff. Uh, can I do Ralph from the Flash stretching? Oh, that's just such a hard effect because it's not just liquefy. A lot of people think that it'd be like. Uh, the puppet tool and liquefy that they use to do Ralph stretching, but it's very rarely ever that. It's most of the time they just composite Ralph's head on a full 3D model. That's why he's in that in the suit that he's in. So the moment he does any kind of stretching, that is him integrated with a full uh, CGI body double. So it's at, that's one of those tutorials that. I'm, I tend to shy away from because it gets the moment you get into 3D space and you're doing rigging and you're using a full CGI uh, body double that's complex and it takes a long time to explain that stuff too uh, can I do the Ant-Man Quantum Realm that'd be more of a template than it would be anything else <laughs> yeah so he, Shane said he tried doing the elongated uh, man effect and it didn't work out too well <laughs> but yeah I've seen people use the liquify effect and all you're really doing there is stretching pixels and the moment you stretch it too far like say my arm if I stretched it out to say here it wouldn't look weird if I stretched it out to like beyond the camera you're stretching all these individual pixels. And if you've shot this at 4K, you might get away with it. But if you shoot it at full HD, those pixels only stretch so far before they start looking distorted and super, super weird. The only thing I could possibly recommend in that situation is wearing something that's a single color. It's a matte color that the light sort of just absorbs from, like even a black jacket then you might be able to do it. Otherwise, it's going to start looking like a like one of those face memes that, you know, they turn the, the neck into like a an elephant trunk or something like that. Yeah. T 
TAR Gaming says happy birthday. <laughs> what? My birthday's in October. But I'm guessing I'll just say it's a belated birthday wish, so thank you. <laughs> Can you do John John's shape change or mind reading and wiping effect from Supergirl? That'd involve me having to watch Supergirl. So yeah, I I'm not sure how much I want to watch Supergirl. Throxing says, Hi, Dad. Well, hello there, son. My, have you grown. Now, let's see. Someone said, Can you do Spider-Man swinging through buildings? Once again, that would involve either using a CGI body double or getting a... and just explaining rigging and all that sort of stuff. And there's a reason there's not many of those tutorials online. It's just... It's, it's death as far as tutorial video goes. You'd have to do that in sort of a mini series. It'd be like a block mini series as well. It would be more than one tutorial because explaining explaining rigging and explaining animating. Like you just have to go to my uh, my buddy Cliff at uh, RTS Animations Roundtable Studios, and he can tell you about how complex it is to um, to animate. He animates in Unreal Studio, but Unreal Studio and Cinema 4D, as far as animating characters go, it's a relatively similar process. You know, even Crimson Wrens can tell you about how long it takes to animate a character, and trying to teach that, it's, it's a hard thing to teach, because everybody's individual results in animating a character will be completely different. So if someone might be able to rig a run cycle and it'll look fantastic. The next person that comes along and rigs that run cycle, it might look like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it, it's it's a hard thing to teach without actually supervising someone while they're doing it. Now, I, sorry, so Mason just meant, said, have you uh, seen Corridor Digital Spider-Man short? Yes, I have, and it was fantastic. And I, I love the fact that that was just one dude who made that entire thing. The only criticism I had of that is just, there was one shot where he was speaking to Mary Jane on the phone and her audio was atrocious. The rest of the thing was fantastic. I mean, even that, even that scene with Mary Jane was well shot, but I don't know what was going on with her, um, her audio. That should have been overdubbed. Ah. Uh. It took me out of it for a bit, but the 3D animation was breathtaking in that. It was just so good. And that was just one guy. But it's just, it's the same as uh, Renz. His animations are fantastic, and it's one guy. Can you show us how you did the face animation in the intro from your light unboxing? I did not actually do that. That was Mason Waters over at Waterfall Films. So he actually sent me uh, another version of that where I'm actually running and I turn into the Flash. I'm going to actually post that at the start of my uh, next Film Linen episode. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Absolutely shocking with the, the water today. Nathaniel Supertech says, do you know how to yeetus the fetus? Do you know just how to just the fetus? What the hell? What kind of question is that? <laughs> uh, Pedro Lima has said the flash facing effect. I'm guessing he means the flash phasing effect. We do actually have two phasing effects up on the channel. There is a uh, vision phasing effect, there's a flash phasing effect. Both of those, I'm not sure what playlists are in, but if you write flash phasing, you will find them on the channel. <laughs> Logan Archer wrote, hey babe, <laughs> how's my night going? Dude, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, so it's going great? Or oh, fingers crossed? <laughs> Hope it goes well. Uh, Furious Madness, did I give up on the Venom transformation? No, I've actually shot the Venom transformation and I'm working with Hero Gollum 3D on getting the animation out because what we want to do with that is have an animation that you guys can just 
chuck your footage on, and then you can deposit yourself into that Venom transformation. So it does take a little bit of time to develop that. And I am relying solely on Joey uh, Hero Golem 3D to be able to animate the Venom model because it's his model and he won't be he won't be giving that out to people. So and I and I totally respect that. So this it will be his animation and I'm just hoping and so is he that it's general enough that we can just be easily be able to composite anyone into like the actual venom suit coming up and over them. But it does take a long time to uh, actually do that stuff because it's it's 3D animation. It just takes some time. Uh, so speed is, uh, slash <laughs> so SS speeds to flash says, "Are you married?" Yes, I am. I have been married for oh, seven years in a couple of months. Uh, have I done a Scarlet Witch effect? Yes, I have. Also on the channel, I think that might even be in the Season 3 playlist. I can make a Star-Lord helmet effect with Facebook. Ugh. That hurts my soul. Ugh. Ah, God, that just, that hurts. Oh, in America, it's actually 8.53pm. And I'm guessing it, in America, it's only the 20th of February versus the 21st here. So, greetings from the future. So I hate to be the guy, sorry, Logan Archer says, so I hate to be the guy who doesn't get the joke, but what is the, what is it with the Hulk effect? Oh, well, many moons ago, oh, it was probably about four years ago, there was a comment from a user called Wolverine. Wolverine, sorry, you're screwing up my uh, my history here. And he asked for a Hulk effect, please. And he wrote it, Hulk effect, please. Oh, excuse me, hang on, burp of the week's coming. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> and he wrote Hulk effect, please. And it just, he just kept commenting it. And eventually it just became a meme on the channel, a bit like the, um, <laughs> a bit like, uh, my God and a bit like, you know, the odd oh, guy. It just became a meme on the channel. And so Wolverine has committed to writing Hulk effect, please on, I think every single video that I've ever put out. So it'll be in the comment section somewhere. He may have missed a couple here and there, but for the most part, you'll find Hulk effect, please written on every single one of my videos. It's just one of those requests that I'm probably never going to tackle. So it's just, it's just funny. I've always enjoyed having the old Hulk effect, please, on there. Uh, have I watched Back to the Future? Dude, I was born in the 80s. Of course I have. Back to the Future is a damn classic. Oh, sorry guys. I'm uh, going to start snorting like Dark Side Phil. All right. Just bear with me, guys. I might just mute the mic while I friggin' blow my nose. There we go. I'm back. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I'm just shaking off the a, a cold. We all got it in the house. Now, did someone... Sorry, Superclips has said, how is Dexter? Haven't seen him in a while. Great kid. We could always learn something from him. Uh, we all just went to our play group and he had a great play. A couple of his cousins showed up. So he's very, very good. He's just uh, sleeping at the moment. But he runs me ragged every single day. I am so, so tired. <laughs> but that's why I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. Every single day, guys. Seven days a week. I'm up at 5 a.m producing film learning what is his dog doing by the tripod oh she's probably just farting around as she does we are missing one of the dogs because april's outside baking herself in the sun uh, would i ever try to make the godzilla king of monsters movie title template i don't know i haven't seen a trailer honestly i'd love to do a captain marvel title template it's just 
that thing's absurdly complicated. There's so many moving parts, and it's just... The title templates, they do okay on the channel, but they don't do fantastically, so putting weeks and weeks of work into it ultimately is not worth it. I do want to do some Captain Marvel effects. It's just I know that Hashi over at Red Giant is working on one, and it's going to be better than mine, so I don't want to bother. Uh, have I done the nanotech Iron Man effect? No, I haven't. That's one that's on my to-do list. I have not done it yet, but I really would like to. Uh, can you do a Stormbreaker spinning on a path with lightning arcing to objects or people if you have a Stormbreaker 3D object? I don't have a Stormbreaker model. Now, we probably could do something like that. I did want to tackle a, a Thor 3D hammer effect. It's just finding a model. So, I guess the thing is, guys, I think... I don't know if you, if you buy a model, you're able to give it away for personal use or anything like that so it's it's hard now stover film said hey where did you get doug i bought doug from a place called like learning to grow toys or something like that a long time ago now but if you go on the amazon and see uh search silly monster puppet you'll find variations of him so no i didn't make him i just bought him and dexter absolutely loves doug to the point where it's just, it's weird. Like, he'll he'll sit there and just talk to him non-stop. <coughs> Do I think I could do an, equ an equipment review? Uh, well, I will be doing a, an equipment review because I've got a new uh, lens adapter for my camera. And I don't know if you guys can see it. But... Uh, over there is a light from Aperture that... Yeah, there's Doug. Yeah, the one that looks like it's got a soft box on it. That's a light from Aperture that they sent me a year ago. And it's just, I've been that busy with different tutorials, and I haven't shot the review for it yet. But I can honestly say that without a doubt, that is the best light that I've ever worked with. I've taken on location. I've shot, I've shot outdoors. I've shot so many different types of scenes with that light. And... I really want to dedicate the time to making a um a really good review of that because they deserve it. It's a fantastic one. <coughs> Sorry about the coughs, guys. Uh, how old is my son? My son is three. It would have been funny if there was a sound saying, I'm not silly on behalf of Doug. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What's the best noise reduction plugin for or effect for grainy footage? Well, there's two that come to mind. One is Neat Video. That was sort of the original um, um, noise removal tool. Still works great. And the other one is Denoiser 2 from Red Giant. So those are the two that come to mind. I don't know of any others, but there probably is some out there. I, don't, I generally don't get a lot of noise in my footage, mainly because I light pretty well. And also, when you're shooting in 4K, noise is less of a um, a problem. And yes, Pedro, I am married. I've been married for seven years at in October this year. Venom title template, I don't really want to do that one. It's just there's too many moving parts, and it just looks hard. I've seen the guys at FX Home, slash the makers of Hit Film, do one. Jarve did one. I wasn't really that big of a fan of what they did so i kind of just i'm i sort of made my own one but like not with the venom head going in and all that because it's just it's too complicated to figure out i tried for a while and i just kind of gave up on it because it was yeah i put that one in the too hard basket unfortunately uh mason's just said it would be cool if i did a nanotech armor effect production crate did one but i didn't really like it <laughs> don't tell but everyone has their own taste and effects they look that's that's why there's so many tutorial channels on youtube because you want to see different takes on effects i like i saw the way they did a star lord helmet effect it look it looks good for what they did they morphed two practical shots on top of each other that's a cool idea i wanted to do it 3d so right there there's two different approaches 
the way they did the, uh, the Iron Man nanotech one. Look, it, it looked cool, but I mean, it wasn't a hundred percent screen accurate. I mean, the armor kind of flows on this sort of like, you know, I don't know. it's hard to explain the way it came on, but it, it, it was just, a, it was a different take. It was their take on that effect and full props to them. I haven't done it yet. So, and I don't know if you guys saw it, but they did a mystique transformation effect. That was really, really cool. And that was ridiculously complex as well. So there's always going to be different, uh, uh, different, uh, sorry. <laughs> there's always going to be different people taking on different effects. So you're always going to have different approaches. Uh, Grant, what episode of Tomorrow's, oh, Legends of Tomorrow do you like? Oh, that's a tough one. There's a lot of good episodes of Legends of Tomorrow. Anything that has interplay between Mick and Ray, I love. Because those guys are absolute gold. Like, um, there was, was one episode where uh, oh, Nate and Ray went to his parents' house this season. And Nate's mother said to Mick, Would you like me to make you some sandwiches? And he just looks at her with this intense look like, You bet your ass! <laughs> <laughs> and that was just gold. Uh, can you do the Captain Marvel energy blast effect? Uh, the, funnily enough, the guys at Production Crate did actually do that. They developed a um, a photon blast using a Trapco particular. And I thought that looked great. I might see if they can uh, lend me that. And I might do my own version of it, but I don't know. I would like to do some Captain Marvel effects once the movie is out. So I'd rather see the movie and see the effects in action. But yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Can we please insert ourselves in Nora's memory in Flash Museum Hall of Villains? That might be a cool idea. I haven't seen the Hall of Villains yet, so I'm guessing that it, that happened this week. But that'll be cool. But yeah, I have mad respect for Production Crate because they put out they put out a tutorial every single every single week, and I know how hard that is. Putting out a tutorial, that, I mean, even complex stuff or simple stuff, every single week. Mad respect for anyone who does that because I know how hard you have to grind to get that done. Uh, Speeds to Splash, Steve, I cannot say your name. Speeds to Flash said, "Have you done a time stone effect?" I have done a uh, a Doctor Strange Apple effect that featured the time stone gauntlet, so you could totally just use that. Hey, do you know how to make animation like? odd one out i actually only started watching odd man uh, odd one out the other day i watched a subway video that he did and i'm fairly certain that they see the toon boom animation or flash animation i don't think it's hand drawn animation but yet i don't know if he's done any tutorials on it but i don't know doing a tutorial for another youtuber's effect it just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. I feel like that they should be doing the tutorial. So it's hard to do that. That's why I've never done ones on like Zack King effects and that. I feel like if he's going to uh, show people how he does these things, and I know how they're done, and they're like, it's a relatively simple process on how Zack King stuff's done, but. I feel like that's not really my place to do tutorials on his effects. I mean, if he wanted to show people how they were done, he would just do it himself. Sorry. Yeah, we've got some good questions. Sorry, guys. If I ever just do a blank stare, it's because I'm reading the chat just over here. Uh, let's see. If you can be in any anime, which one would you be in? Oh, that's easy. Dragon Ball. I'd probably say... Dragon Ball, because it was a lot more fun than Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I just, I loved all the time we spent with Master Roshi in Dragon Ball and just the weird stuff that happened in in, uh, in that house. Uh, Stover Film says, are you subscribed to PewDiePie? I am not. 
I will catch a PewDiePie video every now and then, but, and I do enjoy them, but I am not subscribed. Nor am I subscribed to T-Series, I will say. I just, I want no part in that. <laughs> I could be in One Punch Man with my head. I think I've got too much of a peak on my head for One Punch Man. But yeah, I do... Look, I support the whole subscribe to PewDiePie movement, though, because it's one Swedish dude versus a corporation, and I don't think that's fair. I don't think they should they should ever win. I think he wins... I think he wins the internet, as far as that goes. Could I do a cyborg effect from Ali to Battle Angel? Oh my god. <laughs> uh, you do realize that that was like a $200 million movie with a CGI budget that was probably $150 million of that. And probably involved hundreds of people to... Probably dozens just to create that one character i mean my god and the research that would have gone into that just that blows my mind <laughs> so the short answer is no hey grant you know how to make the explosion dark matter effect uh, wait a minute it's on the, <laughs> what the ween largeman effect <laughs> Uh no. Just respect respect the fact and just get used to the fact that you are a grower, not a shower. That's all I gotta say, dude. Uh, make a tutorial on how to use Adobe Animate CC. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials using Adobe Animate CC back when it was called Adobe Flash. Just check out, just write Adobe Flash cartoon tutorial, and you will find loads of them. Absolutely loads of them. We actually did a three part tutorial on film learning so just do just type into the search in the the film learning videos uh basic animation tutorial there's a three-part series it's actually pretty good uh, so i haven't done a lot of animation for a while i was doing creating an animated series called uh, video games versus real life i made two episodes and it kind of didn't do that well so i thought this involves a lot of work and it's not doing that well so i'm just gonna Put it in a box over there. And then I'll put that box in another box. And then I'll mail that box to myself. And then I'll smash it with a hammer. Sorry. That uh, little bit of Emperor's New, <laughs> New Groove. I love that movie. Could I do a Kylo Run Blaster effect? Once again, Martha Effens. Kaz Faze Kov Board. A every single one of these ones that you've asked me, I've done. So be sure and... Go to the uh, go to my video section on the Film Learner channel and just go nuts with the search function, or just hit videos and just scroll through. Two hundred and thirty-four episodes of Film Learning might even be two hundred and thirty-five now, but absolutely loads of them. You're sure to find something that suits your needs. Hey, Film Learning, can you do an effect of Jake Gyllenhaal in Spider-Man: Far From Home? I'm assuming you mean the Mysterio. Now, which one? His blasts or the way he shows up in that of smoke? And then, can you do an ultra? In can you do an ultra instinct effect? I've been asked this a bunch of times, and I'm considering doing this one, but I need to get a Shaggy costume. But I think I might be too late for that. I think the Shaggy ultra instinct thing might be a dead meme at this point. Oh, hey guys, we've just hit the hour and 10 minutes mark. I'm not sure how long, much longer I'm going to stay around. As you can see, Donnie, Donnie is just about ready to go, aren't you? Hey, want to go outside? <laughs> can I, uh, can I, can you do a Shazam effort? 
don't know what that means. I have done a Shazam transformation effect, so be sure and check the video section of the Film Lennon channel for smoke effect for Mysterio. So we might be able to do something like that. I think we might be able to do something like that. Now, guys, I did just want to float an idea to you that I was thinking of doing. And that was, I wanted to do a weekly episode, maybe near the end of the week, and it'd be the best of that week as far as tutorials on YouTube goes. So people would be able to submit tutorials that they've seen that they might not otherwise you know, be seen by a larger audience or even just ones from a larger audience. I just thought I could make a weekly series, just go, hey, this is a cool, cool tutorial that came out this week and just do that as a regular film learning show. I don't know. What do you guys think of that idea? Just have sort of a best tutorials of the week. And they're just other people's tutorials that I've just gone, hey, check out these tutorials you might not have seen. I don't know. I just, I like the idea of that. Just sort of a roundup of cool tutorials on YouTube. Like I might just pick four or five each week and just say, here's a cool tutorial. Because there's lots of smaller channels that put tutorials out and they're not seen by a lot of people. Like there's a channel called Sand Boxel. He actually won the 100K short film competition. The guy makes really good tutorials, but they've got less than a thousand views on most of them. And that to me, that's a travesty. When someone puts together a tutorial, they put tons and tons of effort in. Like his last tutorial he did was the uh, Lego uh, title card from the Lego uh, 2 trailer. It looks amazing. And that has about 500 views, which, like I said, that's an absolute travesty when he's put so much time and effort into it. It's like a 35-minute long tutorial in Cinema 4D with Lego bricks and all this sort of stuff, and it it just looks so good, and you, you probably, for every one of those tutorials, there's like a thousand more that I haven't seen that have got zero, zero to very little views, and I'd like to give them a platform to be able to grow their channels or even just get get their great tutorials some views. So that's one idea I'm working on. So let's just, we'll just see how it goes to see whether I've got enough time to do that. But that's something I, it'll be less effort than a film learning tutorial. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, I have sorry Pedro I have not watched Arrow season 7 at all I kind of I wasn't a big fan of the last season of Arrow or the season before that or the season before that probably season 2 was the last time I really liked Arrow yeah can I do a Killer Frost dagger growing ice effect maybe maybe because in, in most cases she keep she holds her hand up like this and keeps it relatively still so I think we might be able to do something like that Zemon Swift said, I cried when I realized that the actor from Cicada was the warm apple pie guy. <laughs> yeah, I've recognized him right away, and I think he is absolutely god-awful in The Flash. You rarely see a villain that he's saying with his voice, I'm the bad guy. I just, yeah, I cannot stand his performance at all. He, he just, like, every single scene he's in, he like looks down, looks up like this. So, okay, I've got the evil stare. Now I'm gonna sneer, and I'm gonna talk like this for every single thing I say. I just ah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> See, so and then someone says, "Do the Batman voice again." See, and that proves my point. But yeah, it just sounds like a Batman voice. <laughs> and yes, Reverse Flash is the best villain. I just, I don't understand why he looks like Harrison Wells in this particular timeline. Just get Matt Lesher back. He was a fantastic Reverse Flash. Ah, <laughs> oh, Neha from 9A Films is here, guys. So, say hi, Neha. God, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. Because I think I've said that how many times? 
Uh, human torch effect. See, so that's a yeah, that's that's another one that involves a completely CGI character. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, guys, I'm probably jumping off stream soon because we're at one hour and fifteen minutes, and yeah. I don't know how much longer uh, Dexter will be asleep. And I also do have to get some more work done on the next episode of Film Learner. Oh, oh. There we go. Lovely. Oh. Not a good taste, that one. I don't remember eating that. <laughs> oh my God, someone's actually watched the Lego short film. Uh, if anyone who hasn't seen my uh, Lego short film, <laughs> don't, don't watch it. Don't watch it. It's super weird. Uh, sorry, Superclips Entertainment, I just want to say, anything that involves a full CGI stunt double or body double or full CGI character that involves animation rigging is really, really hard to teach someone. I've said that probably about six times during this stream. That's true. That's true. See, Mason has said you you could use primitives and move them along with the motions of the body, but in the same sense, you're still using a fire sim. So that that in itself is well, not a lot of people have uh, access to a good fire sim like Turbulence 4D, because that's that's still a plugin that you have to buy. Or you could use, say, a, a fire sim in. Uh, you could you could probably use a fire sim, like a realistic fire sim using trap code. Padfoot's asked, "Do you like me, Grant?" Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a snap judgment and say yes, but I don't know you well enough to say yes. I do like you, but you seem like a nice fella. Blender is a great tool for fire sim, yes, uh, so is Houdini. But they're two things that I don't know really how to use. You can see, anything that involves fire sim and interactive fire elements isn't the easiest thing to teach, and I'd have to learn how to use it first. <laughs> but am I like annoying with my questions? No, dude, no. There was one guy that was way, like, way, way back, like, way, way back last year that was annoying with questions. I'm not annoyed by anybody's questions, really. Dude, I used to work on a, on a help desk, like an IT help desk. So very little actually annoys me these days. And I have a three-year-old that says, Daddy, prob or asks me questions about 900 million times a day. So, it's all good. White Ashlock says, just wanted to say thanks. You've inspired a lot of us. You've inspired me in my film career. And you've helped me out so much. I brag about your channel in film class all the time. That is awesome. Now, Superclips has just said, uh, would I do a Kingsman effect like Production Crate did? I like their, their Kingsman effect. So, in general, if someone does an effect that I like and I can't see how I would improve on it, I'm not going to do it. So by all means, go over the production crate, subscribe to them, give them your view, write down in the comment section that you like it. Because, yeah. Adrian and Chris do a great job over there. Grant, did I see the look of Harrison Wells in episode 8, season 5? Probably. Pro probably. What are we on? Episode... 15 now? I haven't seen episode 14. <laughs> but yeah, I so I probably did. All I know is Reverse Flash slash Harry Wells, not Sherlock, because I, I gotta say, I hate that character. Like, I think Tom Cavanaugh's a great actor, but his Sherlock French accent sucks. I can't stand it. I just don't. 
I know they have to bring in a different Wells every single season. But yeah, I'm I'm just not a fan of that character. I like the I like the subplot that he's investigating Nora. It's just yeah, I just I don't like I just don't like the accent really more than anything. I mean, if you're going to be be French, don't be like what he is like sort of half French. Do that? Do you know that that thing they call Fortnite? <laughs> I am aware of the Fortnite. I have never played it, and I've not watched anything Fortnite related because, well, I'll be thirty nine in October, and I really feel like that between that and Minecraft, that is not my demographic. I could probably play it and enjoy it. I still play. Um, I still play games. It's just, I don't know. I feel like that's something that people would spare time play. And yeah, I ain't got none of that. Oh, Dev Runner, I've heard you request Flash running on walls, dude. I've heard it, okay? Niha is actually in the process of building a really cool CGI stunt double of me, and that's what that effect requires. Flash running up, say, a wall, or running up a building, which I'm pretty certain that's what you're after. That is what that requires. You need a CGI stunt double to run up a wall. Otherwise, you could just run on a treadmill on a green screen and achieve that same effect. But you st these are the sort of things that you actually need. If you're going to do any kind of running... Yeah, if you're going to do any kind of running up a wall, unless you've got a wire team, unless you've got you and Wu Ping standing off the side and four guys going on the wire, you need either a green screen with a treadmill, which, by the way, I do actually have. So if I go over there... Oh, God. Sorry, the cord's sort of pinching. I do actually have a treadmill over there that I can put on the green screen, and I've just completely screwed up this camera shot. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Yeah. That's what you've actually got to do. You've either got to shoot the person on a green screen, maybe tilt the camera on the side, or you you need a CGI stunt double. That's it. Keep requesting it, because it keeps it fresh in my head. What do I do with Doug? Doug's chilling. I'll go get him. Sorry. Guys, Donnie wants to go outside, so I'm just going to let him out. Watch out, Donnie. Come on, April, you want to come in? April, you want to come in? Come on. Sorry about that, guys. April wanted to come in, and Donnie wanted to go out. Hey dudes, what's up? Dude, get your hand out on there. Yo, Padfoot, what's up my man? So, Anyone got a question for my fluffy ass? Stover film, speeding robot, Zemon Swift. Come on, guys. Man, this desk is a mess. Ugh. Can you believe this guy he comes on a live stream and this crap all over the house? Zemon Swift, it feels fantastic. Do I and Grant fight off camera? No, never. Psst. He's not here right now. He locks me in a cage when we're not filming. Help me. 
How's Dexter? He keeps trying to feed me plastic food. Every time I go outside, he says I'll make you dinner, and then he gives me plastic toast. You can't eat plastic toast! <laughs> Do I take a shower in the bathroom or in the washing machine? That's offensive. Where's Grant? Oh, he stepped outside. Said he had to take a crap in the backyard. That's so gross. I mean, pee in the backyard, but take a crap in the backyard? Ugh. Sorry, Sugam Patrap has a weird question. Please reply, which one is better for 2D animation? Animate CC or After Effects, if you don't have a drawing tablet? Well, the name CC Animate probably gives the game away. I would work in CC Animate over After Effects unless you have a plugin like Juic. Or you could easily open up CC Character Animator. Go to the channel OK Samurai, who is one of the developers of Character Animate, and watch the tutorials there. The guy is an absolute legend. That is the easiest way to do any kind of animation of a character. It shows you how to rig the character. All you have to do is draw the character's individual parts in say Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign and then you can import them directly into Character Animator and rig it there. Why do I sound like Grant? Ugh, I do not. Can I do a solo tutorial without Grant? You guys know I don't have active fingers, right? I can't use a keyboard. Ben Affleck or Christian Bale? Mm. Well, Christian Bale was in better Batman movies than Ben Affleck, but Ben Affleck was a pretty cool Batman. He just needed to have a good movie around him. By the way, Justice League made him look like a bitch. Padfoot, I'm not going to dignify that question with a response. We all know the answer. Where the hell is Grant? Okay, guys, I've got to go scratch my balls, so I'm going to I'm going to head off over there. So, make sure you say bye. All right, I'm back. Doug did you go on my stream? No, dude. Okay, cool. Okay, guys. Now, I did want to ask one more question, guys. <laughs> do you guys want to see me actually play some games on stream or not? Or just want me to do like sort of live tutorials and these Q&A sort of things? Because I feel like we could maybe change things up and actually do some play some games because it's going to be the only way I'm going to be able to play games is if we actually play them on here and I just sort of interact with you that way. I don't know what games yet, but hmm, we might be able to play something because we can still do live tutorials. But... <laughs> God. Why did someone have to say Fortnite first off? Fortnite, Apex Legends, blah, 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 blah. No one's ever going to say Pac-Man, are they? Or Frogger. Love me some Frogger. No, I'm not. Trust me, I will probably not play Fortnite. Crash Bandicoot on an emulator. I mean, I do have my Super Nintendo Classic right here. So we could, if I could actually capture that to the stream, 
I could play some Mario Kart or Donkey Kong Country and that sort of thing. I'm not sure yet. But we might actually, like, start doing that on the streams. Like, actually play some stuff. Cube. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Donnie's, they're my, Donnie's howling right now, so i got to go get him. Donnie, come here. Come on, quick. Come on, inside. Donnie, now please. Come on, here you come. That's a good boy. <sighs> Sorry about the guys. It's actually a um, fire siren playing. You know, like a woo, like the bombs are dropping sort of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, Donnie always howls when that happens. Uh, can you do a tutorial about compositing a CGI character into a video using Cinema 4D? I have actually done that, guy. If you want to check out my my episode on C, just type into our video search CGI stunt double. Uh, I've got a three part series on actually doing that. So check that out. Yeah. Same with the Black Panther suit transformation. That would also involve a full CGI stunt double. Now, just in case nobody knows, that there's Don Donatello. That's April right there, and that nutcase over there is Peggy. So, guys. We've just hit the 90 minute mark. This is probably one of the longest streams we've done. Ah, there you go, guys. Sandboxel has actually sh shown up. Funnily enough, dudes, we were actually we were actually talking about him and his Lego tutorial about 10 minutes ago, something like that. But yeah, uh, object. Sorry, speeding robots also suggested object tracking in Cinema 4D or procedural growth in Cinema 4D from Sammy Diaz. These are all uh, effects and stuff in t Cinema 4D that require the full version. So I have generally shied away from those because most people don't have the standalone version of Cinema 4D. They generally have Cinema 4D Lite and a lot of those things that are like, they involve like procedural stuff and they also involve like the more complex simulation stuff in Cinema 4D which isn't present in Cinema 4D Lite. So yeah, I mean object tracking isn't in Cinema 4D Lite either. So it's actually hard to um to teach that stuff when you know that <laughs> Yeah, yeah dude, I did actually say good things about the tutorial. I'm actually uh, thinking about doing a weekly tutorial series where I um just summarize a couple of like four or five cool tutorials each week and just put give them a platform to actually get seen. So that's what I was mentioning your tutorial in the uh, context of. Same with the Winter Soldier armor arm effect. I'm pretty sure that we'd have to do some serious tracking with that. And that wouldn't be 2D tracking, that'd be full 3D tracking. Ah, well, that makes that makes sense, Dev. Okay. But yeah, I have um, I have watched your tutorial and I have downloaded your um, uh, your download pack. So I am going to do a little bit of work and hopefully I'll make a cool uh, film learning intro with uh, Sandboxel's Lego intro effect. In fact, uh, if you want to drop a link for that down in the chat right now, by all means, do it, dude. I'll uh, I'll unhide it so it'll show up. Because I'd like as many people as I could to watch his uh, Lego intro tutorial because it's really freaking cool. Yeah, I get so many requests for that elongated man effect, Ugh. and I think I've explained it like four times on this stream already. That it's harder than it actually looks. Could I do it? Yes. Could I explain how to do it? Maybe. It's all good, Soy. It's all good. So there you go, guys. If you want to check out that link that Sandbox has uh, currently put up there, that is his uh, Lego... It's it's like a Lego title card tutorial. It's insanely cool. I really, really enjoyed it. And 
while you're there, check out his channel. He's got some great tutorials on there. He's got uh, the Star Lord's uh, gun turning into bubbles. He's got a Thor landing one. There's just there's some good stuff on there. Even the Pez dispenser from uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Oh, and he did the Hulk as well. Okay, now I'm gonna have to check that out. You cheeky, you cheeky bugger. Okay. Now I've just totally lost my chat there. Okay, chat's coming back. You did a Hulk effect. Wait a minute, did you? Oh yeah, 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 you did a Hulk, your Hulk transformation one. I've I've watched, I've actually watched about three quarters, but I haven't finished it yet. See, I've totally watched like I think just about every tutorial you've done, I've I I smashed through. <laughs> Simon Swift says he wants to make a cake. You do that. You make that cake, dude. You make that cake. Oh, I would eat a cake. Seriously, to go, though, guys, I need to start getting back to the the gym. <laughs> now, guys, I'm going to jump off stream very, very shortly. We will be back for another stream next week. But for now, I think I better jump off. So I want to thank everyone for coming out. This has been a lot of fun, and it's gone for way longer than I thought it would. There's my live dashboard. Sorry, guys. But I want to thank everyone for coming out. By all means, check out the Avengers Endgame free title template. Uh, check out the new Spider-Man Far From Home template who have just put up. We've also got the Doctor Strange portal effect, the Doctor Strange shield effect. These are all videos that have come out in the last month. Be sure to check them out. Uh, if you can, guys, uh, check out the Facebook page, check out the Twitter, check out the Instagram. They're all above my head. You can also check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. All of that uh, is going directly to uh, our film learning itself. We just bought a new lens adapter for my camera so we can... You know, make the show look a bit better, and that's all thanks to the Patreon donors and the people that hit that uh, sponsor button down below or the join button down below. So all that goes directly back into the show to get props or buy plugins and that sort of thing. So got to thank everyone for doing that. And I think we might just uh, put a cap on this one, guys, and say thank you very much. What I might do, guys, and I'm thinking I probably should do this, is I'm going to cut the uh, tutorial section out of this uh, one where I did the uh, custom... Uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> the custom Avengers logo. I'll just cut that out of this, and then I'll just condense that so people don't actually have to... Um, yeah. So <laughs> people don't have to watch this entire farce. <laughs> One last question, Grant Cook versus Grant Gunston. <laughs> Grant Gustin. Please answer. I can't answer that. No. You know, I'm gonna leave that there. You could do a rap video you know, with all your edits. I've done a rap video actually. Um, yeah. Just find the Mo Diddly playlist that's on my channel and you'll actually find some parody songs that I did many, many years ago. Now, I'll answer this last one. What time is it in Australia? It is currently 2.41. My son's going to wake up any minute, and I've got to have some lunch. So thanks very much for coming out, guys. Much love. We'll have a new uh, Insert Yourself episode with Spider-Man Far From Home very, very soon. I'm looking forward to that. And until I see you again, guys, keep learning.